And that brings me to my next guest, freshman GOP Congressman Luke Messer of Indiana and fellow freshman Congressman and Physica of California. Gentlemen, welcome. This is going to be great. <laughs> Let me start with you, if I may, uh, Congressman Messer. When I hear that the speaker is switching the battle now from this very aggressive fight over Obamacare, which so many of the freshmen were sent to, to Capitol Hill to fight, and instead switching it to entitlements, I'm wondering if you got that memo, too, or if you sent that memo to the speaker. Who's setting the agenda, please? Well, listen, the speaker is the speaker. I think what his comments acknowledge is that as this debate has moved on, these two issues are now being combined. We've got the debt ceiling limit that comes in just about 10 days here and then the, the continuing resolution. But more importantly, how we're going to fund bu bu the budget in the next year. I think the speaker is acknowledging we have to do both those things. Um, I still believe there are ways we can improve Obamacare and it ought to be part of the debate. But clearly we've moved past where we were just a few days ago. Let me ask you this, um, if I may, please, uh, Congressman Vera. I heard uh, Senator Ted Cruz say over the weekend to our Candy Crowley, and I'm going to quote him specifically, the debt ceiling historically has been among the best levels that Congress has to rein in the executive. And it turns out, I think it's like 28 times over the last 55 times that the debt ceiling has actually been increased since 1978. There have been strings attached. So where do the Democrats get off saying that this is untouchable, that the debt ceiling is untouchable? Well, it's untouchable. We pay our bills as Americans. So is it a time to negotiate? Absolutely. You know, and I actually like what the speaker's saying. All along, I've said what we really need is to put a real budget together. So let's open the government. Let's, you know, whether it's two weeks, whether it's six weeks, but let's actually take that time to put together a real budget that starts to deal with our debt, that starts to deal with the deficit. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by looking at everything. We've got our entitlement programs. We've got to strengthen Medicare, Social Security. So, again, the shift in conversation is a good thing. But it starts with um, Leader Reid and Speaker Boehner actually being able to sit down and listen to one another. Name calling is not going to get us anywhere. You know, that, I hear these guys you. have to be able to negotiate. Yeah. You know, the, listening the thing and the talking. Go ahead. Yeah, just the thing I would add is that every major legislation that's actually reduced spending that's passed uh, here in Washington in the last several decades has come in conjunction with a debt ceiling conversation. The thing I hear back from my yeah, district is... Yeah, but you know is, what, Congressman? i got to stop you there. It's never been... The stakes have never been this high. Sure, there have been strings attached, but they've been threads. They haven't been massive cables and ropes. And so that's where I think a lot of the criticism will come on your side. But I want to read you specifically, sir, something that Warren Buffett said. And when Warren Buffett... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to read it. I'm going to let him say it. Because when Warren Buffett speaks, I listen, everybody I know listens, Wall Street listens, and congressmen and congresswomen should listen as well. Here's what he had to say. I'm going to ask you something about it on the other side. It makes absolutely no sense to let it be used as a lever for other things. I mean, if you want to change laws on abortion or immigration or you name it, tax laws, whatever, let that be a piece of legislation that people hammer out. But to tie it to something about whether you break the promises of the United States government to people all over the world, as well as its own citizens, just makes no sense. So it ought to be banned as a weapon. I mean, it, 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 should, be like, it should be like nuclear bombs. I mean, basically, too horrible to use. Whoa. Now, those are pretty strong words. Congressman Messer, are you listening to a man like Warren Buffett, you Republicans, yeah. and your demands yeah. when you talk about the leverage of the debt ceiling? Yeah, well, well, of course, no one wants to see the debt ceiling breached. But with all due respect to uh, Mr. Buffett, his comments ignore history, whether it's Bill Clinton, Ron George Herbert Walker Bush, or even uh, President Obama just a few years ago. The, the leverage of the debt ceiling has been the times when we've come together as a nation and worked to pass plans that would reduce spending. We ought to do it now. You know, it's the president and Harry Reid who are saying they won't negotiate. The House Republican position on both the debt ceiling and our budget is we want to come to the table, and we're being told unless the president gets his way that he won't come. Well, here, here's what I'd say, Ashley. Quickly, last Let's, comment. 
Um, you know what? Let's not use the debt ceiling. We've already authorized these bills, so let's pay our bills, but let's put a real budget together, get everyone together in a room, put everything on the table, learn how to listen to each other, and let's get a real budget that puts us on the right track. All right. Best of luck to you, freshmen, and thank you very much, Congressman right. Luke Messer and Ami Bear. I appreciate you coming out today. And it's thank nice you. to see you, Shay. This is becoming a, a special <laughs> event on our program. <laughs> You can come back anytime. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let our viewers know as they uh, head off into the sunset together. You want to stay with.